video. So this work was inspired by a project I did with Tori Army Primary School around biomimicry. So that's copying nature and looking at architectural design and how architects use nature as inspiration. You're going to be designing a small habitat. It's creating kind of a natural little small natural environment and then we're going to be looking at how you can combine that with architectural model making as well. This project was also inspired by my friend Sean who's a fellow houseplant enthusiast. First thing you'll need is you want to find either something like a plastic bottle which is going to be your habitat sort of enclosure or a jar like a quite a large jar, this is a pickle jar I think. The jar or the object that's going to hold your habitat needs to be obviously smaller in diameter or circumference than the enclosure so it has to fit inside it like that. The good thing with plastic is obviously you can cut into it. If you are using something like a plastic bottle, it might be a good idea to get an adult to just help you. Just poke a pair of scissors in like that, and then they can help you cut the bottom of the bottle off as well. So I've got some small stones. Now it will help if I sort of fill halfway up to the jar, maybe just below halfway. That'll help with the drainage. The plants I'm going to be putting in are just these tiny little spider plants that I've had um, growing on my big spider plant. Uh, but you could put anything in it really, anything that's going to grow um, in a small habitat that's not going to explode too big. And then I've got some soil as well, so I'm just going to put a little bit of soil in there. Of the moss I'm just going to place. My little spider plants which actually I've I put some rooting gel on the other day, so they should have rooted extra fast. Garden of Eden! So, uh, when I, whatever I'm building, I'm probably going to make sort of on stilts or on legs, like some of the images. Things like lollipop sticks, little ca uh, coffee stirrers, kebab sticks are really good. Bamboo as well, you might have some bamboo in the garden. Cardboard, I've got some of the cardboard strips and things left from other projects that we've been doing. Some of this quite strong white wire. If you're using things like these sticks and the wire, you need to be really, really careful because especially with these sticks, they're quite sharp at the end. So just make sure you've got an adult nearby or maybe an adult helping you. One thing I always do is if, I'm, if I am going to use anything like wire, I always just bend the end over like that. And that stops it from being sharp. So first of all I'm going to draw my jar, so I'm just going to draw like an ellipse for the top of the jar, so it's got a squashed circle shape, and then an ellipse for the bottom of the jar, like this. And then I'm going to just join the two together, like that, with two lines, and then I can kind of draw from where the edge of the jar comes in, sides, like that. And that gives me a nice quick sketch of roughly what my jar sort of looks like. like so, nice. And then I've got the jar that goes over the top of that. So that's, I can kind of see actually, I've done it almost the same scale as the actual real one. So again, a big ellipse and I kind of want to, I could even use it if I want to do it to scale, I could actually just sort of mark roughly where the top of the jar is. I'm just going to do a nice big ellipse. Notice how when I when I do this ellipse, I hold the pencil sort of quite far away, so I get so I draw with my entire arm, not just my fingers like this. And then again, smaller ellipse, not too small, bigger than the base, like that. All right, and then straight down, in and out. And just follow that like a lip shape here to show. And that's sort of, sort of right there. Look at some of Lee Ball's work. I'm a big fan of Lee Ball's sculptures. She's got a really, really cool like aesthetic um, to her work. They're like futuristic science fiction palaces. And we can combine that kind of style to more biomimicry, so sort of copying nature and form and things like that and looking at architectural models. So I'm going to put some sort of stilts, structure stilts on there, which I'll probably use the cocktail sort of sticks there to go with. So maybe like four of them. So 
some four structural pillars. And then I'm gonna have some, I'm gonna poke some cardboard, some flat pieces of cardboard through them. I've just drawn sort of, just like that. I'm gonna do like a, a few layers with like gaps between them. As if they're like levels of a, of a building. It's like a house on stilts. Now I'm going to cut these with pliers. Excuse a bit more control. You can use scissors, all right. But what I'd say is just be really, really careful because as you cut, watch, it's going to probably ping off. So if I if I cut it like this, it's just going to shoot off like that. So you do need to be really careful. It's good if you get someone to hold the end for you as you cut it because then it's not going to fly off anywhere. You can just even cut into it a little bit and then snap it, sort of controlled snapping. Controlled snappage. And the first thing I'm gonna actually do is with these little sticks, I'm gonna poke them in to my jar. And I'm gonna start with my levels. I'm just gonna sort of draw maybe roughly that size. You could measure it if you want to make it more accurate. And actually, I'm going to do these like different, different, slightly different shapes and slightly different sizes. And then I'm going to poke a hole into them. So I'm actually going to use one of the sharp ends of this. So you could use a pencil. Doing this on your own, you've not got an adult supervising. Get something like a bit of blue tack or a bit of putty behind, behind there. Anything soft that will that'll absorb the, the sharp points. So I could even actually just put a piece of cardboard underneath it. Then poke it through. There you go. One. In fact, I could use pencil as well. Two. Three. Four. Be really careful and gentle. Right, there you go. So we've got like a little a little platform now. Um, what I'd advise is if you want all the holes to match up when you start sculpting the rest of the structure, if you are doing something like the layers like this, so place it down over it put your pencil through and make the four dots so they are lined up. Remember, use the cardboard underneath to just poke the stick through so it's extra safe. Obviously remember though, it does have to fit inside your larger jar. Unless of course you're not putting a larger jar over the top. You could still make a habitat without a large jar on top. In engineering and building, triangles are the strongest shape. So if you build with triangles, your structure is going to be really, really strong. That's why geodesic domes are so strong because they're made up of triangles. My sculpture is exactly where I want it in terms of structure. I'm just going to tack a little bit of PVA glue around all of these joints and then leave it to dry. I'll show you how you can make some little people as well to put on. If you haven't got any card at home, you could use something like a, a cereal box. I'll start with the head, a little shaded like a little circle like that. And then as it gets to the shoulders, a bit wider. And down the body. And then it gradually gets sort of slightly thinner into the feet like that little character. I'm going to cut this one out here, but leave the bottom like a tab, so leave like a, a length like that at the bottom. Like that. And then I can stick my little human friend on there like that. But this one's got a little doggy. I stuck these little bits on with some PVA and they're dry now. It takes about 24 hours to dry the PVA. I've chosen to work with a really small model, but you can remember you don't have to work this small. Lady going for a stroll. One last thing I want to show you is that 3D sort of pen I was telling you about. So I got this quite a while ago and I've not really used it that much, but for crafts like this, it'd be a really good tool to use.
this is the final sculpture. And I managed to find a pot, an empty pot that was big enough. This one is an alternative idea inspired by Luke O'Sullivan and uses just 2D cardboard constructed to create the illusion of sort of buildings and towers laid upon one on top of the other to create a kind of 3D collage. And then I've put some pebbles in there and then put the plant inside a shell, which is quite nice. So you don't have to make it fully 3D standing, it can be kind of two dimensional. <laughs> 